family. Now, what is your favorite color for your room? Purple. No, that's, that's no good. That's bad for rentals. And the little things that bring us all together. Last time I had sex, I tore my ACL. Is this some pathetic attempt at flirtation? Well, when you put it that way, yeah. And So It Goes is the name of the movie, and Rob Reiner is the director, and I can't believe I'm here sitting talking to you. I, you know, and I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> yes. I can't believe I'm For different reasons, though. See, yes, I guess yeah. I just find it unbelievable. Michael Douglas and Diane Keaton. Where do you come up with a cast like that? How do you, do you, do you send an email? Do you call people? Do you go like this. Please <laughs> let you come and be in the movie. No, I'm, I'm, listen, I've worked with Michael before. Right. I have American a great, uh, great relationship with him, and I had a great experience on American President, and I love working with Michael. I had never worked with Diane, uh, but the pairing seemed absolutely perfect for this. I mean, you, you know, it's a, it's a love story. It's a comedy, you know, about people finding each other later on in life. And uh, you needed two people who not only can, you know, they're great actors, they're icons, they're Academy Award winners, but people who still have sexuality and still have, you know, romance in them. So this was like a perfect pairing. It's great to see a love story for people over, let's say, over 30. Yes. If, if only that. Yes, yeah, no. Uh, is, is that a hard sell? Yes, very hard. Although, uh, what we learned, uh, you know, when we did Bucket List was that there's an audience out there. People mm -hmm. want to... You know, if you have a film that older audiences uh, want to go, they'll come. They'll come mm -hmm. to the film. I mean, we made this joke when we did Bucket List, and it was very successful. The joke was, you know, amongst our demographic, we had a 100% a, 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 a desire to see with a 40% ability to get to the theater. <laughs> so eventually, though, they come. And, you know, they just, they're just they not first weekenders, you know, but they if they hear about it and they know that there's a film there for them, they'll come. And we saw that with Bucket List. We've seen that with Marigold Hotel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there is an audience out there. Uh, you, you were kind enough to come to our dinner a few years ago. You made an impassioned speech concerning the need for studios and uh, uh, releasing companies to, to find, to serve this audience. They don't track people over 59. And they're not tracked. So our entire audience, they don't ask them, are you interested in this movie? I think it's happening. I, th I think we're seeing more of it than ever. Your yeah. film is a perfect example. It just makes sense. I mean, my generation, uh, you know, the baby boom generation is the, still the largest bulge of the population. We grew up going to movies without another electronic device in our hands. We actually go and watch the movie. So... We want to see have stories told. We want to see uh, characters, and we want to see characters that we can relate to. So, yes, there's definitely a story out. Uh, you know, definitely stories out there for for our age, and there's definitely an audience for for these kind of films. Yeah. I think as more of these films are being made now, some of the onus is going out to the audience that 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 is has been crying for these films to be made. Now it's their responsibility to get out and see the films. Yes, I mean the, the, the fact is. Films won't get made unless people come to see them. So, I mean, if you're saying that there is an underserved population and you're making movies for them that are specifically for them and then they don't show up, then then they will not be an underserved population. They'll just be served exactly the way they should be. But I think for, for you know, with a film like this, with two great actors, uh, I think we have a really great story. And even if you're not of that age, I mean, you're going to enjoy the film. Mm -hmm. There, your last two films have been sort of from a child's eye view, and now this is very much from an adult side. Oh, there, there's there's a child is very important to the to the film. Yes, is it tougher to direct kids or big stars? Um, they both have their you know issues. Um, the great thing about uh, you know experienced actors is they know what they're doing. They have craft. They know exactly what they're doing. They not hit the marks and all that stuff. Kids are kind of uh, they're instinctive, and they don't. There's not a lot of, you know, excess baggage, you know, they, that they bring to it. Uh, but they don't have the craft, so there there are challenges for for each. Because you've had great success with both adults. Yeah, and, and, and I like I working with all all types of actors. It, it's fun to work, and everybody works differently. For instance, in Michael is a very uh, um, you know, solid. You know, he's got tremendous craft. He hits his mark. He knows exactly what he's doing. And and Diane is more instinctive. She works a lot like I do. I mean, she she actually told me before we um, before we started shooting, she says to me, 
uh, you know, I, I don't act. She said, I'm not, I don't act at all. I'm just who I am. And I said, well, that's great because I love who you are and I've <laughs> admired you for years. But what she meant was there is real, really no division between what she is off screen and what she is on screen. So she takes the part and makes it her own. She improvises. And it's the way I like to work. So I, I really love working with her. And she sings. She does sing. She I mean, she's sang the Woody Allen movies a long time ago, and yeah. I had almost forgotten she sings so Yeah, well. she sang in, in Annie Hall, and I think in a movie called Shoot the Moon, she's had a little bit of singing. But in this, she's a singer, and it's interesting because, you know, the character she plays is somebody who is finding this later on in life, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, this career as a singer, and which I think is great because what it says for people, you know, of our age is that, you know, we live longer now, and... You know, 65 is not that cutoff that you once it once was. I mean, we can have two and three careers in the course of a lifetime if we have passion and if we have things that we're interested in. And my mother was 65 when she started her film career. I mean, her uh, film and singing career. She became a, you know, a, a, um, a great singer when she was 65. So it's similar to what we have here. And Diane's great. I mean, she's got this beautiful voice, and it's terrific. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about your toupee? Not the one yeah. you're wearing now. No, the, 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 this, uh, yeah, you know, people ask me where it came from, and I said, well, there was a cat uh, that was roaming around, and it passed away, and we had put it there. There's a great, a great, one of my very favorite moments in the film is when Michael Douglas leans down and says to you in the car window, buy yourself a new toupee, and, <laughs> and they show your, you show your face, and yeah. it's like, the jig is, what? Yeah, that, really? That everyone knew? How did you know that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I uh, you know, it's, it's uh, anything for a laugh. Great shot in the film. One more question that echoes. It, it, it's it's <clears throat> Michael and Diane in bed together, staring at the ceiling. It, it echoes so nicely your scene from When Harry Met Sally so many years ago. Are you comfortable? Sure. Juxtapose those two scenes for me. Basically, it's the same thing. The the man, the woman is um, much more mature. She's much more evolved. She knows what she wants. She's connected to her feelings in a, in a much deeper way. And the man runs around like an idiot trying to figure out what the heck he wants until he realizes what's what's right in front of him is what he wants. So it's that time when you the first make love, and the guy is like. He doesn't know what to do, and of course, that's humiliating to the woman. And it's this awkward dance that you do at the beginning of a relationship until you finally realize that that's who you want to be with, and then it becomes better. So it's similar. And with Be Meg and Billy, it's like Billy's thinking, what did I do? Why did I do this? You know. And here, he's the same thing. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. I liked it. It was fun, but I don't know if I, what, I, what am I committing to here and all this. <laughs> So it, it's it's the same story, yeah. basically. Great scene. A wonderful Thank film. Rob Thank Ryder, you. thanks so much for your Thank time. Thank you very thanks. much.